2023 is here at last. And for many of you, it's the start of another year and the start of another chance to go out there and achieve your ambitions, your dreams and aspirations. And for many of you, becoming a data analyst in 2023 is very much a goal that you have in mind. So in this video, I'm gonna show you 10 tips to help you get a role as a data analyst in 2023. So let's begin. Number one, learn Excel. It goes without saying that Excel is the number one tool used in data analytics and it's a must know, must have tool that you guys need to master. So when I talk about Excel, I'm talking about pivot tables, VLOOKUPs, I'm talking about learning to create dashboards in Excel and also learning how to clean data, manipulate data, filter data, that kind of thing. That's what you guys need to learn if you really want to be good at Excel. And actually, Excel is pretty much all you need in terms of tools out there. A lot of data analyst roles just require you to be very proficient at Excel. So I've got a host of videos just on Excel. Do check them out. But learning Excel should be your number one priority to become a data analyst. And that brings me on to number two, data visualization. So this is how I started. Back in 20, 2018, I learned Tableau. Now Tableau at the time was quite a popular tool or on its way to become a very popular tool. But today you've also got other tools out there like Power BI. So my advice to you guys is take a pick. Tableau is a good start. You can get Tableau desktop on a two week free trial. You can also get Tableau public, which allows you to produce visualizations in Tableau and share them to the cloud with the public. And Tableau resources and Power BI resources are widely available, both on Microsoft's website, Tableau's website. You can even go on the YouTube channels for Tableau and Power BI. There's a ton load of training information and courses and knowledge out there for you guys to absorb. But Tableau or Power BI is a great start and data visualization is very much an essential requirement because you will be presenting data to a lot of business stakeholders. So learning how to visualize data properly in a meaningful way will really help you shine. Number three is to get on LinkedIn. Now LinkedIn is pretty much an essential platform if you want to build your profile for recruiters and employers to see you. Now, if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, fear not. You can start one today and start by adding in your experience, your education, your skills. And in doing so, you can then start to build a picture of all that you can offer for potential employees out there. And when you're on LinkedIn, interact and feel free to start following other data analysts, data professionals, other people in the world of data science. So get out there, start connecting, start following, start commenting on people's posts and get involved in some of the conversations that are going on on LinkedIn. Another tip I have for you for LinkedIn is to ask for recommendations from past colleagues and past managers. If you've had and enjoyed a really good time at a particular company, asking for a recommendation will really do wonders for your profile and treat your profile, your LinkedIn profile as a CV because it's a CV for the world to see. And honestly, it's something you should own. And we'll talk about owning your personal brand in future, but LinkedIn is a great starting point for you to get exposure and get yourself in front of potential recruiters out there. Number four is to reach out to recruiters. On LinkedIn, you can actually reach out to a, anyone who's hiring for a particular company or a particular industry. So have an idea in mind who you want to connect with and send them a message. You'll be surprised how many actually reply to you to confirm whether or not they've got open roles which you may be suitable for. And the other thing to, to search for is to search for talent resource specialists. A lot of big companies today on LinkedIn have dedicated people who are out there scouting for potential employees to join their company. And if you reach out to these talent resource specialists, they may have open roles or roles that they're about to fill, which they may be able to share with you. Number five is to build a portfolio. If you can build and showcase some example work that you've done as a data analyst, so you might want to showcase some work that you've done in Tableau, or some work that you've done in Power BI, or even some work that you've analyzed in Excel, you can showcase that on a platform like GitHub. 
So GitHub allows you to host a portfolio of all your data work. And even if it's voluntary work or freelance or contractual work, you can use a GitHub profile to really showcase some of the work that you've done and showcase to people that you're capable of doing a data analyst role. So get out there and create a GitHub profile. Number six, have a polished CV. Now, if you want to stand a good chance of being offered an interview as a data analyst, you need to make sure you have a really good CV. Make sure there's no spelling mistakes. Make sure you have an opening profile or a summary of your background, your personality, your career, uh, your, what it is you're trying to achieve in terms of your ambitions as a data analyst. Make sure you format your CV correctly. Make sure you don't use any pictures. Make sure you don't use any colors or weird fonts. Make sure you try not to go over two pages. There's so many things you can do to enhance and really structure your CV and make sure you get that right first. Your CV will be used during interviews. Employers will look at your CV and they'll flick through and ask you questions about your CV. And most of all, make sure your CVs are factually correct. Make sure any information on there you can talk about if anyone asks you about them. Make sure you, you don't overstate anything. Make sure your CVs are really concise and to the point. So having a CV is really critical, guys. Make sure you invest your time in putting together a good, solid CV. Number seven, perfect your interview technique. If you are fortunate enough to land an interview, well done. But now it's important that you get your interview technique polished up because your interview and how you interview will could determine whether or not you get a job, even if you have all the skills. So interviewing well is really important because you'll be in front of hiring managers, HR specialists, and your ability to portray yourself and to talk properly in front of potential business users and colleagues is very important. So when it comes to interviews, you want to remember the STAR technique or the STAR method. So STAR is short for situation, task, action, and result. So what was the situation? What was the task that you took from it? Or what task did you start to create from it or implement? What was the actions? And what was the actual results? Remember the result bit is really important. And even if the result wasn't to your expected outcome, talk about it. Talk about where you learned things had gone wrong. It's really important to showcase your business awareness. So this is where STAR really helps with that. Number eight is to learn a language. So when I say language, I mean SQL or Python. Uh, if you can learn a querying language like SQL, it'll put you at an advantage. It won't put you at an immediate disadvantage because a lot of roles that I see today as data analysts, and I've gone in as a data analyst, a lot of the SQL querying is actually done by a data engineer. So although a lot of people say that it's essential to learn SQL, I wouldn't say it's a fundamental requirement. If you can learn it, it'd be great. And SQL isn't really a hard language to master. If you can, then definitely do it. The other language I highly, highly recommend, which I think today is becoming more important than ever, is Python. So Python is becoming like the go-to language for, for coding, automation, for data science, ML, AI, you name it. Python is really, really becoming an important language to learn. So if you can learn Python, you'll be at a good advantage if you can learn it. If not, it's not a problem to become a data analyst. You don't really need those two, but if you can, it will give you an added bit of leverage when you go to interviews or when you have a solid CV in front of recruiters. Number nine, do some freelancing or volunteering work. Now, this goes back to an early point I made around building a portfolio. So if you can find a way for you to build some data analytics experience, it will do you really well. So if you can get on, for instance, a freelancing website, do some, some work there, or offer to do some voluntary work, work maybe potentially for a local school or hospital or doctor surgery, or even for a friend or colleague or family member. And if you can showcase that on your CV, on your portfolio, it'll do you really well. So having some experience, even if it's not business commercial experience, it'll be fine. But some experience is better than no experience. And number 10 is to learn some basic statistics. Now, when I say statistics, I don't mean go out there and learn linear regression or learn standard deviation. I'm talking about percentages and basic averages. But also, if you get the chance, learn about weighted averages or moving averages. These are 
concepts which are actually used quite a lot in data and data analytics at a basic level. So whenever you're working with data and numeric data, learning some statistics will help you a lot. So guys, that wraps up my top 10 tips to become a data analyst in 2023. If you can become consistent with building your skills, building a portfolio, getting out there in terms of applying for roles, learning and putting the hours in to build that knowledge on new tools or Excel, for instance, then you can do it. 2023 is your chance to really shine and use the time to finally get yourself that role that you've always wanted. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please reach out to me if you have any questions post a comment on this video. I will put up some useful links throughout this video on other content related to some of those tips and get in touch with me on LinkedIn as well. So I wish you the very best of luck for 2023 and I really hope this is the year you finally land your role as a data analyst. Take care guys, peace.